Good afternoon, students. Am I audible to you? Audible as well as my screen is visible. Good afternoon, students. Am I audible? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your acknowledgement. Uh, actually, today, uh, somehow, actually, I'm facing a problem because my computer is not working today. But today I'm trying to conduct this lecture through mobile phone. So kindly acknowledge uh, my screen is visible to you. My screen visible. Just a minute. Okay, now screen visible. Okay, thank you. Okay, so today is our last topic of unit number two. So after this topic, our unit uh, number two will finish. So the, la the last topic actually we are going to discuss about the assembly language. So before to discuss about the assembly language, uh, already we have covered few parts of the assembly language. But actually I want to uh, discuss with you like suppose if you are come finally as we have discussed in unit number two our computer can understand only the machine language machine language is nothing but the binary language only zero and one so machine uh, store as well as understand only the binary number zero and one as you know even the computer is to computer store uh, any data in the form of binary only, right? And before to start CO in unit number one, we have discussed how actually the electric signal represent your data in the form of uh, zero and one. So even your data transmission, receiving, that also conducted in a binary form in zero and one. So suppose first we'll understand why these different languages came into the market like there is assembly language there is a lower level language assembly language is a lower level language higher level language 
and even day by day you are on your uh, new languages coming into the market like if we talk about assembly language another is c c++ uh again the java .net python so the higher level language increasing and uh, we can understand comparatively if you understand the python and c you will come to know the difference even both are generally we say it is a higher level language but you will find there is a big difference in between their generation but today actually we are talking about the very beginning suppose if we think so we are assuming here imagine suppose if you want to implement your program in a binary language then we try to understand how difficult it is suppose if we would have if uh, we might have started our programming in machine language that time would be very very difficult for us so to understand this concept today uh, we have taken this example for example uh, n is equals to i plus j plus k suppose if you want to implement a program in which you are adding three numbers and you are getting output that is the n and for that suppose we have initialized i is equal to 2 j is equals to 3 and k is equals to 4 so here we have initialized three numbers for i j and k now in our previous example we have seen how actually we execute a program the many time we have seen this example how like a pc program counter is there Go point to the instruction that uh, the instruction want to execute. So after the, that instruction move into the MAR, that address move into the MAR, and then PC incremented by one. So MAR hold the address of instruction, right? So this kind of example we have seen. Similar thing here. Suppose now we are assuming your program starts in a location of one zero one. from in a memory from 101 location your program started and your data started from 201 so similar example we have seen uh in which you are uh, there is there is the continuous instructions are there up to 101 to for example 200 and after 201 there is a data is there so again here we are assuming your instruction starting from 101 and data starting from 201 now let us understand the coding what kind of coding we have to do here first we have to load the contents of 201 into the accumulator right so the instructions are there so instruction is the first instruction is for example load load contents of 201 into the accumulator so for example at location of 201 there is a value of 2 so this 2 value will move into the accumulator ac the second in instruction would be add so add the contents of 202 to accumulator so at the data location 202 there is a value of a 3 so this 3 will be added with the 2 So three, two plus three. How complicated is that? Then the accumulator is holding value five. The third instruction is add the contents of two zero three to accumulator. So accumulator is holding number five, and at two zero three location there is a number of four. So four will be added with the accumulator value. So that is five plus four. That is a nine. and then the accumulator is holding a final result that is the 9 the next instruction is store contents of accumulator to 204 so finally at the this 9 value holding a accumulator that 9 value would be stored at into the location of 204 so actually see 
this kind of programming in again all the things in the machine language it would be very tedious and error prone because this example we have seen how actually it is tedious we have seen here the same example see here now here you can understand suppose it is in the binary form so this address address again 000 uh, again it is a 12 bits representing address so address x y z and this of code is nothing but your instruction operational code that is uh, upload add add so all this are nothing but the operational code and this is the address now imagine how difficult it is to write your whole program in binary form 0001 and the same thing if suppose if you are writing in hexadecimal so what is a one one is your operational code and 004 is nothing but the address right these things we have discussed and how actually your addition perform this thing also we have discussed last to last lecture So actually this kind of programming even now it is written in decimal 201 202 now it is easy to even comparatively easy to understand but it would be very difficult if all the numbers are in machine language right so what we can do here instead of now imagine suppose it, it is very difficult in binary so what we can do we can use hexadecimal right instead of binary and because of this hexadecimal we have seen in our in a diagram instead of 0, 0, 0, 0001 it, it is directly we can write exact in hexadecimal one and instead of 12 bits we can write three hexadecimal number so your program size is minimizing so this kind of improvement we can do right and code as a series of lines we have seen in the code there is a series of lines we have to write in a code and we have to take care of two things like that is memory addresses as well as the instruction so we need to translate our binary data because after all the computer can understand only the binary numbers but now we are using hexadecimal number for to easy to understand because it is very difficult to write in binary 12 bits it is very easy to write three number in hexadecimal so what we can do we can create one translator program and which a translator program automatically translate your hexadecimal instruction and your address into the binary right so we can use this kind of translation even we can assign a symbolic names and mnemonics uh, short code short code short form code uh, for the instruction and in one line you will find there is a three fields the first one is location address second one is three letter of code and third one is the memory references so the first one is location address because in a memory your instruction as well as data is stored but at which location instruction is stored we have to identify that's why the location address to identify the instruction where the instruction is stored in a memory so that is a location address the second one is three letter of code the data of code means add sub sub for the multiplication mul this kind of three letter of code and the memory reference addresses for the operand so the three fields will be there for per line 
but what is the problem with this kind of programming need more complex translation program actually in a binary it is really very difficult to write a program in a binary but suppose if we improve instead of binary we have written in hexadecimal and we have used one program which translate your hexadecimal to the binary but still this kind of program is more complex even for the translation so here is an example so here suppose this the first one is a binary now imagine if you are implementing a program nowadays in the python suppose if you want to implement the program for the addition within two to three line you can easily implement a program right but suppose if you are implementing a program in binary imagine how it would be very difficult for you this 101102103104 this these are the instruction and 201202223204 this addresses for the data now what is the instruction is the instruction is 0010 this is the this 0010 is nothing but your op code operation what kind of operation you want to perform so that is upload data into the accumulator but which data so this information you will get from the contains so in the contains you will get the information at which location at 201 location so whatever data is at 201 location that will be uploaded into the accumulator similarly 102 the first one is the first line is for the address then second is for the op code 102 whatever data at 102 So one zero two, there is when you will translate into decimal. Here the number is one two zero two, right? The second line in binary one two zero two. So this one two zero two one is meaning one mean add whatever location at two zero two with the accumulator. So that's a one two zero two one means add with the two zero two. So at two zero two now. look the address of 202 so data is there that is a 3 so this is a 3 data will be added with the accumulator so see how difficult it is to write a program in binary so we have simplified instead of this binary we have used hexadecimal so by the exam is decimal what will happen your code size decreases like address is there and the first line is nothing but your instruction like 2113 these are the instruction and 201 202 is nothing but the address in hexadecimal so what we have discussed up to here we have seen to write a program in binary it is very difficult even we have written one program who convert your hexadecimal to the binary but still this program is very complex to write a program simple addition program but these many things you have to write you have to remember the three build the main is address where the instruction is stored and where is data stored and you have to manage your the address location as well as your instruction as well as your data so how actually you can how we can simplified our programming design so binary is not good hexadecimal not good then third form is symbolic addresses third form is symbolic addresses so what we can do in symbolic addresses we can use first field address addresses now symbolic first field addresses now symbolic memory references in third field now symbolic now you have assembly language and need an assembler to translate so this kind of programming language is assembly language in which we uh, no need to bother about at which location you are uh, the memory address it is stored we so direct instead of writing a directly address we use 
a symbolic addresses and the memory reference is there again but these memory references are also symbolic so because of this symbolic it is easy so again to translate this kind of program we require assembler assembler translate your program into the machine language so assembler used for some system programming like compilers input output routine so uh, here you could see the symbolic program in symbolic program like uh, this address is 102 103 104 actually these things we no need to write mainly we have to write the instruction actually suppose suppose if we are considering here assuming here if it is symbolic program then the three fields are there like address is there 101 102 and instruction now here observe instead of binary instruction or hexadecimal instruction there is a symbolic form which is, this help us to easily remember the symbolic instruction like lda lda means load address add it means add the again add for add sta for store dad for data so at 201 location there is a data 202 location there is a data and these are the instructions so in the symbolic form actually our work reduced it is difficult to remember all the form like two is for load one is for add right so three is for to store it is very difficult to remember but instead of this what we can do we can use a mnemonic code or short form of english we can use which is which will be very easy to remember like lda for load add for add sta for store the symbolic program so in assembler program you will find in assembler program even this label you will these are the optional and operation it means your instruction like load add add sta and instead of again for the memory here they have we can use operand like i j k n and this i j k n are located to the respective data field so this is a job of assembler who allocate this i j k n to the respective data field now here we can easily understand here you no need to remember their instruction addresses as well as data addresses simply it become easy in a simple you are getting a code which these codes are similar to your english language you can easily remember like a load add add store and the respective operand addresses are there like i j k n so in assembly language it is very easy to implement the program instead of a symbol symbolic program or hexadecimal program or binary program so that's why we uh the in programming evolution evolution the assembly language plays a important role in the development so actually here we have completed our unit number two so there are few students who join uh, uh, after diploma as well as few students have changed their branch right they have uh, um, uh, migrated from other branches so for them it may be difficult to understand now because we have completed almost two units but it actually it is very very simple subject computer architecture and organization if you read or even you listen once you can easily remember all the concept okay so don't worry those who are d2d students as well as those who have changed their branch and migrated into the computer so first i want to welcome you all those who are uh, came into the computer department as well as all d2d students don't worry we will conduct all uh, 
the lectures that you have not attended for unit number one and two. So, uh, even actually, if you want to attend all the lectures, already I have uploaded all the videos on YouTube, and the link I have shared through Moodle to you, so you can refer all these video lectures, and you can easily understand the CAO subject. So actually what we have discussed in this subject in unit number two. So mainly unit number two is for the instruction set. So here uh, we have discussed about the instruction one. We have seen the characteristics, types of operand, types of operations, assembly language, addressing mode, instruction format, types of instruction, instruction execution, machine state and processor status, Structure of program introduction to RISC and CISC. So briefly, within 10 to 15 minutes, I will discuss what we have discussed in this unit. We have discussed about the characteristics, uh, like what is an instruction set. Uh, instruction set that is a complete instruction set is nothing but we can say it is a set of uh, instruction that are understood by the CPU. So this instruction, uh, the CPU can understand only the instruction that is a binary or machine code instruction. And this instruction usually represented by assembly language. We have seen actually what is an instruction. Instruction is made of opcode and operand. Now what is opcode? Opcode means do this, like add, sub, multiplication, so MUL, division, DIV, all these are the example of opcode. Opcode means do this, like add. That is do this, add. And source operand reference. Add, but on which elements to do this? So that is operand. Opcode, operand. So R1, R2. Add R1, R2. So whatever value in R1 and R2, you add both the values. So that is the R1, R2 is nothing but the operand. So do this, do this, and result operand reference. For example, add R1, R2, R3. So add R2 and R3 and store the result into the R1. So that is the result operand reference. And after complete uh, finish the add instruction, you will move on to the next instruction. So the next instruction reference, that is when you will have done that, do this. So mainly in instruction, you will find there is a four elements. One is opcode, second one is operand, third is operand result, that is again one operand, and fourth one is next instruction and reference. Here we have discussed how actually your instruction execute. So in unit number one also, already we have seen how the instruction execute, instruction address, uh, first, we have to calculate the instruction address. We have to page the instruction. Then, after paging the instruction, the, we have to decode the instruction. After decoding, whatever the operands are there, for example, two operands are there. So, two operands we have to page. So, operand page is there, operand paging. Then, uh, we, after, so decoding is done as well as the operand paging is done. So, here we will perform a data operation. And suppose if there is a number of results are there, so number of results will be stored. So operand is stored, right? And it may happen the result may be required in next instruction for the further calculation. So return string to again for the operand address calculation or it will page next instruction. So instruction representation. Here we have discussed machine code. Each instruction has a unique beat pattern. For example, like uh, we have seen, for the addition, the instruction is instruction is one. For to load the data, the instruction is two. So unique pa pattern is zero 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 one, zero zero one zero. So machine code, each instruction has a unique bit pattern. For example, to upload zero zero one zero, and for the addition zero 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 one. This is unique pattern is there for each instruction, and for Human consumption, to understand human, there is a symbol we use for this instruction. For example, 0001 
the symbol is uh, uh, add. so add points to zero 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 one so instead of write triple zero one we directly write add sub load in instruction representation so instruction format we have seen opcode operand reference and operand reference instruction types so there is a different types of instruction you might have used in the programming like some instructions are data processing instruction some instruction are used for the data storage data moment or the program flow control so there is a uh, different types of addresses we can use while executing an instruction like a three address so we can use for example suppose your instruction is for the addition a is equal to b plus c so here we can use a three addresses two addresses one addresses or even for the zero addresses we can perform this kind of addition operation like here three addresses so operand one operand two and the result so a is equals to b plus c so how many addresses require three a b and c and the fourth one for to point to the next address similar thing we can do by the two addresses how like a is equals to a plus b so it reduces the length of instruction less operand required right and we can perform the same operation instead of two operation addresses we can use one address like first we will load uh, there's accumulator accumulator is there who hold the value so first we load a value into the accumulator then we load a second value and add it with the accumulator value accumulator hold the result so similarly by using one address even for the, with using a zero addresses how zero addresses we can perform addition operation so by using a concept of stack so in a stack explicitly we are not uh, 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 we are not uh, utilizing addresses but implicitly we are using a stack concept in which we are pushing a value of a value of b and then we are adding and storing the result on c and then we have after popping up we are getting the addition of e so this is our point number one that we have discussed in unit number two and finally we got the characteristics that is an operation code known as of code means for the operation code second one is operand so references to operand on which the operation is to be performed so like add a b so a b is operand and add is of code and reference to the operand which will store the result produced by the instruction so suppose a b so a is equal to a plus b so a is a storing result that is a reference to the operand and a reference to the next instruction to be executed so after the execution of first instruction it will execute the another instruction so this is the point number one that we have discussed in unit number two then the second topic was operand so in types of operand we have discussed about the addresses so this operand as we know suppose a and b so it may happen the operand you will get maybe the addresses it could be the address address points to a data location right so it can be address it can be number it can be the positive number or it can be the negative number or it can be the characters right address numbers characters or it can be the logical data like a flag many time we use a flag so the operand this operand can be like integer character float right or the flag we can use as operand na? so these are the four different types of operand we can use now operand we have discussed now opcode opcode is nothing but the operation so there is a different types of operation and types of opcode we use in the programming like a data transfer for the data transfer arithmetic logical conversion input output system control transfer control so we have discussed in unit number two how in the data transfer we have to specify what is the source what is the destination different arithmetic uh, of code are there operations are there addition subtraction multiplication division shift and rotate operations are there logical 
bit wise operations are there and or not conversion is there binary to decimal input output uh, power to take input from the keyboard to display the output at the monitor uh, data moment is there system control uh, transfer of control like jump instructions skip instructions subroutine call all comes under the operation the next topic that we have discussed in unit number two is that is addressing mode and format. So in addressing mode, we have discussed addressing, direct addressing, indirect addressing, register, register indirect, displacement index and stack. I hope you might have remembered we have discussed these different types of addressing mode. And it is very easy to understand by looking the diagram only. Why is immediate addressing mode? Because immediately the opcode and operand is present in the same instruction. It is direct addressing mode. Why direct addressing mode? Because the direct address is given. Directly you can access the particular operand from the memory. That's why it is called a direct addressing. Similarly, indirect addressing. Why it is indirect addressing? Because directly you cannot access the memory for the operand. Instead of this, first you are pointing to the operand and operand pointing to the actual operand. So it is kind of indirect addressing. Then we have seen the register addressing. Why the register? Because here is now here, the, it is not referring to the memory. It is referring to the register. So that's why it is a register addressing. Similarly, the register indirect addressing. How register indirect addressing? Because the instruction there is an address. Address points to the register. And register point to the operand. And that operand is stored into the memory. So it is registers pointing to the memory. So that's why it is called, we can say it is a register indirect address addressing. Because register is used over there. Displacement addressing. Here actually the address we have to calculate. An address is calculated by the register as well as the, the base value. So by the register uh, address point to the register operand and by adding the base value, you will get the memory operand. That's why displacement. So there are different types of displacement like a relative addressing, then base register addressing and index addressing, stack addressing. So we have discussed all these types of addressing in unit number two. Then the next topic uh, that we have discussed that is instruction format. The same thing, whatever we have discussed earlier, that is opcode and operand reference one and reference two. So instruction format, we have seen uh, how actually we can execute the instruction by the different way. Like a three address instruction, two address instruction, one address instruction, zero address instruction, and the RISC instruction. So in this topic, we have seen, suppose this is the ex equation is there, this a plus B into C plus D. How we can evaluate by the three address? Similarly, by the two address, one address, and the zero address. Just a minute. The next topic was instruction execution. So in this topic, again, we are already this topic, we had covered in unit number one. So the same thing we have discussed in unit number two, how the instruction executed. First we have to page and then we have to execute the instruction. So the paging cycle, the same thing, already we have discussed like PC, hold address, translated to the MAR, MAR point to the memory location, and the memory, whatever the instruction in the memory location that will be loaded into the processor and the processor execute the instruction, all these things we have discussed. And in execution, either the data moment is there in between processor to memory or processor to input output. Data processing is there for the arithmetic or logical operation or the control instruction is there, for example, to jump or the, in the instruction, it can be the combination of all above four things. Instruction cycle with the state diagram already we have discussed. Then we have discussed about the machine state and the processor states. 
the same thing. We have discussed about uh, how the different components are there, like a PC, execution unit, instruction register, control unit, uh, arithmetic logic unit, accumulator, memory address register, and data register. How actually it translate and the instruction executed, like PC holder address of the instruction translate to the MAR, MAR read uh, the address from the memory and at, from the respective location of data register, the data, data loaded into the accumulator. And then the arithmetic logic unit execute the instruction and whatever data required, it will taken from the accumulator. So all these things we have discussed in here, machine state and processes. processes. The same thing we have uh, covered here in detail, how you are actually instruction execute. So all this part we have seen Practically here we have discussed how your instruction and data loaded into the memory and how it is executed. Right? You might have remembered this example also. Then we have discussed about the structure of program, like machine level language, assembly level language, higher level language. So there is a three different uh, levels we have considered. We have discussed about in detail machine level, assembly language and the higher level language. Again, in this topic, we discuss about the structure of assembly language. How actually it mainly provides the three basic features like operation code in the form of uh, English short code, mnemonics, symbolic operands and data operations. Then we have discussed about the imperative statement, declarative statement and assembler directive statement. Then in last lecture, we discuss about introduction to RISC and CISC process, right? So mainly here you have to remember the RISC and CISC processor difference. This is an important thing. And today we have discussed about the assembly language and how the improvements have done binary, then hexadecimal, then symbolic, and then finally the assembly programming. And after, after assembly programming, there's assembler, then the compiler and the higher level language, and interpreter, so different higher level language uh, came into the market. So all about the unit number two. I hope all you could understand unit number two. And if you have any doubt, any query in unit number two, you can ask me. To the chat box. So session is open for you for the 10 minutes. 